In our last episode, we rescued a Blood Eagles prisoner from the Rollins labor camp named Beckett. Beckett had plans to kill the Blood Eagles leadership, and he needs our help. We invited him back to our camp, where he set up a bar, and together we began to plan our attack. Beckett believes that the key to defeating the Blood Eagles is to get another raider gang to help us in our fight. The problem is that the last time Beckett saw the leader of this rival raider gang, he kinda stole stuff from him. And so now we're running tasks for this rival raider gang to make peace between them and Beckett in hopes that they'll help us defeat the Blood Eagles. Edwin, the leader of the rival raider gang, had the key to one of his weapons caches stolen by a traitor. And so, to get into Edwin's good graces, Beckett wants us to track it down. He sends us to the treetops in the mire, another location that we've explored and cleared during past live streams. Whomever created this little town in the treetops connected a number of platforms by staircases that lead all the way to the top of the trees. Scattered along the way are weapon mods, armor mods, scrap, bobbleheads, magazines, recipes, and armor plans. About three-fourths of the way to the top, we find a platform with a chair that has a ratty skirt on top of it, and next to it, an end table with a pipe pistol and a note lying on top. Scouting report. We made it as far north as Moss Town, skirted Harper's Ferry and Berkeley Springs, both too dangerous to explore. Moss Town itself is bordering on collapse, with the raiders spreading out down the Savage Divide and the Scorched in the Cranberry Bog. I recommend we stay here in the mire. Stay up in the tree, wait it out, as we have been. This note is pre-Wastelanders. At this point, with the defeat of the Brotherhood and the responders and the Free States disappearing, the raiders were coming down from the mountaintops, as the Scorched Plague was spreading. To avoid them both, the former residents of the treetops decided to just hunker down and stay here. But with all the bones and bodies we find here, it doesn't look like this strategy worked well for them. We find what we are looking for when at last we reach the top of the treetops. On this final circular platform, we find a big red end of dungeon steamer trunk and inside, Edwin's key. With the key in hand, we can head back to camp and check in with Beckett. Ah, you got the keys! Nice! Look at you, you're an animal! You know that? I, I, uh, you know, I mean that in a positive way, of course. Anyway, while you were gone, I reached out to Ronnie from Edwin's gang. And they want their key back, but they also want the traitor who stole it dead. The good news is, oh, we finally have a name for this genius. Bronx. <laughs> Cute, huh? We can pass an agility check of four to say, This is a waste of time. I'm itching to kill some blood eagles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Slow down there, killer. If we want to take down the blood eagles, we need Edwin's help. And to get Edwin's help, we need him on our side. So we take it one step at a time, okay? What's Ronnie's deal? Well, Edwin's her uncle. And someday, when he kicks it, the gang goes to her. But the truth is, she's been leading that gang for years already. Having a tentative agreement with her is almost better than having a true handshake with him. How does Edwin feel about the Blood Eagles? Oh, they, uh, have a bit of a history. Edwin used to walk around with this giant, fat cat perched on his shoulder. He loved that cat. I bet you can guess what the Blood Eagles did, right? <laughs> That's right. They stole his cat, skinned it, and cooked it for dinner. Then they sent the bloody pelt back to Edwin in a sack. <laughs> Classy, right? Consider Bronx dead. Uh, you got it. I bet there's a stash around there, too. So keep your eye out. You want a drink before you head out? Or what? Why is Edwin so desperate to have Bronx killed? Edwin's had numerous setbacks with his gang lately. See, it's one of the bigger, low-key raider gangs around, but he's shedding respect. And making an example out of Bronx should help him put his house back in order. Hear anything from Sage yet? Not yet. He's, uh, a free spirit. I love him dearly, but, uh, dependability, mindfulness, this plane of existence, yeah, not his thing. Sit tight. 
I'll take care of this. Ooh, I kind of like this. I got the bigger plan. I find the pieces. You execute them. I feel like some sort of mastermind. With that, we complete the quest out of key, and we begin the quest, Traitor's Demise, Kill Bronx. But it's at this point that if we chat with Beckett over a beer, we can learn a bit more about his past. Something you wanted to talk about? Hey, Beckett, I just want to talk. Of course. What's on your mind? Tell me about your older gangs. Ancient history, huh? Uh, fair enough. Well, let's see. Okay, first, I was an independent. Huh? Just trying to steal enough to keep me afloat. The uh, problem was all the competition. The gangs. Uh, once I realized it was smarter to join them, I ran with Hopkins hooligans. And that went pretty well, actually, until Hopkins got himself killed. Then I ran with Edwin's gang for a little while until uh, the Blood Eagles came calling. And they uh, recruited me into their gang. And the rest, as they say, is history. Ever do anything you regret? <laughs> you serious? Uh, I could give you a list. If you're asking me to pick something in particular, uh, it would have to be the dirt I shoveled for the eagles. But you have to understand, I was drugged out of my mind. And the things I did, uh, I never would have done for any of the other gangs. I I have so much blood on my hands. I don't know if I'll ever be able to wash it all away. Let's, uh... Let's just talk about something else, okay? Tell me more about your time in Edwin's gang. Ah, Edwin's gang. Good booze, good people, and good memories. Edwin himself was a little crazy. I mean, not blood eagles crazy, but... He never made us do anything we didn't want to do. We were just a bunch of gangers, looking for loot, getting drunk, and <laughs> singing like a bunch of idiots through all hours of the night. Uh, if it wasn't for my stupid chem addiction and falling in with the Eagles, I'm pretty sure I'd still be with his gang today. That's it for now. Ah, no problem. Can I do anything else for you? So Bronx was the traitor who stole the weapons cash key. Looks like our latest errand for Edwin is to kill this Bronx. The last time he was seen was at Ingram Mansion in the Savage Divide, another location we've previously explored. However, upon arrival, we see that the Ingram Mansion has changed. It's become a Mothman cultist lair. They have fortified the mansion with felled trees and decorated it with Mothman statues and icons. Looks like to proceed, we have to clear it of Mothman cultists. Now, to my final reward. As we loot the bodies of the dead, we still hear at least one more cultist inside. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled. We find a nest, for lack of a better word, that the cultists have built on top of Ingram Mansion, forms a ramp that leads to the top. But we'll start by exploring this ground floor, heading through a broken window. We arrive in the kitchen and dining room. On the table here in the dining room, we find another copy of the Chapter 8 holotape which is the same holotape we found at Blake's Offering, which we explored in our last video. Not sure why we have duplicate holotapes here. I was kind of hoping to hear chapter seven or nine. On the kitchen counter, we find a copy of CH Monthly October. This is a copy of Cryptid Hunter Monthly, which was added to Fallout 76 in the Wild Appalachia DLC. We already read it in a previous live stream, and it doesn't have any relevance to the current story, so we'll skip it for now. Moving through a hole in the wall, we arrive at the cultists' bedrooms. Mattresses on the ground, surrounded by glowing candles and mothman eggs. Using the jetpack, we can leap up to arrive on the second floor, and here we find the cultist. This appears to be the master bedroom, and lying on the hearth before a fire is a new holotape, cultist... Mind's eye. The cathode ray tube is the retina to the mind's eye. Break out of your cocoon. 
spread your wings. Embrace his gift. See through his eyes, and you will ascend. Gravity means nothing. Crusades mean everything. What the heck? Cathode ray tube? Is the retina to the mind's eye? What, do they think they're part of some sort of TV serial? We find a weapon plan on a dresser at the foot of the bed. We can pick a skill level one locked wall safe by the bed and loot an end of dungeon steamer truck. We find a balcony attached to the master bedroom. This just brings us around in a loop back to where we first arrived on this floor. On a side table at the back of this loft, we can find a magazine lying out. And then on the ground, at the back of Ingram Mansion, we find a weapons workbench. And we see that even though they've got a mostly intact building here, the Mothman cultists have erected tents for themselves. Ingram Mansion holds a secret, unrelated to Beckett's story, that I previously covered in a video on the Black Mountain Ordnance Works that you can watch here. On the western side of the mansion, we see a plank. It kind of looks like something the cultists would use to execute people, to make them walk the plank. It teeters over the edge of this hillside. However, when I leapt from it and hit the ground, I didn't find anything down here. So not exactly sure what they were using this for. Well, we succeeded in killing Brox. He was hiding out here among the cultists. He wasn't dressed as one of them, so I don't think he became a cultist. Instead, he was wearing raider gear. Now that he is dead, we can head back to Beckett. Upon arrival, we find a traveling merchant at our camp. I got what you need, or something close. Traveling merchants can now randomly arrive at our camp with Wastelanders. Heading back to the bar, we see that Sage has arrived. All right, he made it out of there safe and sound. <laughs> ah, so glad you're here for the fun. Isn't Beckett just the best? Oh, oh, must get another place setting for you, huh? Yeah, that would be cool. Party's almost ready to begin. Oh, there you are, Sage. How you feeling, pal? No time to chit-chat, Beckett. Oh, I see you found a friend. Here for the party? Nah, there's no party, buddy. My friend was the one who freed you. You remember her? Remember? Yeah, sure. I saw it first, felt it last. Good times. <gasps> oh, we're gonna need more cake. We can pass a perception check of four to say, it's going to be difficult getting any useful information from someone clearly under the influence of chems. I know he looks completely hopeless, but I promise you, it was worth springing him out of that place. Or we can say, Beckett, why'd you make me save this fool? He's, uh, harmless. Honestly, he doesn't always rhyme. This is new. Maybe it'll wear off. Is this a joke? Nope, no joke. This, uh, this is Sage. Just bear with me. I wish I had been able to help this poor guy sooner. <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. Sage was like this way before he was, um, experimenting with his, uh, last cult. Sage? Buddy? Pal? Friend? Can you hear me? Hey, I need your help. And we're taking down the Blood Eagles. All of them. Now to do that, we need to cut off the head. You get me? No, 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 no. Not the head. Cut out the heart. The supply at the cave. The cave. Ooh, spooky. Cave, cave, cave. <laughs> hmm. Okay. The cave. Got it. Sage, you better come back later for the other questions, okay? And try to drink some coffee or something. You're killing me here. Ugh. The cave? What does he mean by this cave? What are you talking about, Sage? Oh, hey, hey, hey. You have a lovely camp, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, buddy. Well, looks like if anyone can interpret Sage, it's got to be Beckett. He heads back to his bar, and we can chat with him. 
Ronnie is gonna be thrilled to hear the betrayer is also dead now. What the hell was that? Look, Sage is, you know, well, he's been through a lot. He just sees things in a different way, but he still sees things. You know what I mean? How exactly was that helpful in any way, Beckett? I'm not wasting your time, I promise. Actually, he did give me some information. Valuable information. I think he's still in the cult, man. Nah, that's his default sort of self. Like, he rarely makes a ton of sense at first, but I assure you, he got some info. He's been through a lot, hasn't he? He has. Um, I don't even know his full story, honestly, but, uh, well, he is useful. Nah, he's always been able to help me out. He just, uh, you know, sees things differently. At this point, if we want to, we can flirt with him by saying, Weird. I can't imagine why someone as appealing as you would be friends with a guy like that. I, uh, yeah, uh, thanks. <laughs> Look, uh, Sage is harmless, and he's more useful than you'd expect. Just give him time. He'll grow on you. Okay, look, if we want to take out the Blood Eagles, we need to cut off the supply before we cut off the head. Now, the cave is where the Blood Eagles store their supply of buff out. And without it, well, it'd be harder to convert new members. What do you mean, cut off the head? See, the Blood Eagles are led by three vicious maniacs. The Blood, the Eye, and the Claw. And when I say maniacs, I'm, uh, I'm being polite. We can pass an intelligence check of eight to say, I doubt the buff out there using is pure. They must have modified it in some way. Huh. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. You know, come to think of it, the pills they force-fed me did look a little strange. <sighs> I am glad I'm off that shit, that's for sure. So I suppose Sage isn't that crazy after all. No, he's not crazy. Just misguided and burned out. That's what messing with all these cults will do to you. Just give me the details. I'll do it. I bet you want a drink as well, right? Free one. On the house. Sorry, uh, no alcohol in the free ones. How does cutting the supply help us hurt the Blood Eagles? Uh, see, regular Blood Eagles aren't the problem. No, they're the symptom. I mean, yes, they're terrible, but the three bosses are clearly building an army. As they increase the doses of buff out, the addicted become worse, uh, more violent, more terrible. We have to put a stop to that. Will Sage be back? Maybe. I hope so. It's hard to know what he considers to be important to the rest of us, but, well, I think he will. Find the buff out in this scary cave. Got it. I mean, yes. That's a fair summer. With that, we begin the quest, Supply and Demand. We need to retrieve this buff out supply. The quest marker points us to Hawk's Refuge, a location near to Harper's Ferry that we explored in previous live streams. Heading inside, we can rid the place of ghouls. <laughs> It has some lore concerning the Sunday Brothers, an unrelated story to this one, so we'll be coming back here to Hawk's Refuge in an upcoming lore video. Incidentally, Hawk's Refuge is a guaranteed spawn for a Wendigo. He's almost always glowing when I find him. We find what we are looking for in the Wendigo's lair. Next to a dead settler is an end of dungeon steamer trunk, and inside we find the buff out supply. We also find a mini nuke on a rubbish pile back here. With the buff out supply in hand, we can head back to our camp and turn it into Beckett. Okay, without this buff out, the Blood Eagles won't be able to fill their ranks. <laughs> oh, we're really doing it! I kinda wish you would come with me. Look, that buff out you stole? Okay, they forced that shit into my body over and over until I couldn't even see straight. That, and they tortured me. Look, I'm just... 
I'm not ready to pull the trigger. Not yet. We are a hell of a team. <laughs> Damn right we are. But uh, before we break our arms patting ourselves on the back, we've still got tons of work to do. Anyway, it's time to move on to the big score. I want you to kill the first of the gang's three leaders. The Blood. You know, this is the one who finds the most vulnerable and brings them to the cave. I couldn't pass the previous endurance check on my character, so moving on we can say, The Blood? Where do these stupid nicknames come from? Well, if you fall for the hype, cute names are supposed to represent how they contribute to the leadership. <laughs> Bunch of bullcrap if you ask me, but The Blood collects new blood through forced conscription. The Eye searches for and extracts secrets from prisoners that can bring down the gang. And don't forget the Claw, who basically tortures and breaks the recruits who resist. Ah, a real bunch of freaking lunatics. Won't they just find another person to be the Blood? Well, normally, yes. But you took their chems, and I'm destroying them. So best case scenario, I have to waste time finding more. They won't be worried about filling the gap in their leadership. <laughs> Not now. We can pass a charisma check of four to say, I can tell this is personal for you. I'll take care of it, Beckett. Yeah, it is. I can't lie. This rips me up inside. I'm... terrified. It feels like, um, my own blood is working against me. I feel like I'm forced to be, uh, docile here. Uh, this is so embarrassing. Upsetting. But, thank you. I, uh, need your help more than you realize. What's the news from Edwin's gang? Well, I gave Ronnie the key and told her the news about Bronx. Oh, she's thrilled, by the way, so hopefully we'll hear some news soon. What are you going to do with all that buff out? I'm going to dig a hole somewhere deep, then bury it. Hopefully it'll sink into the soil and that's it. It's a temporary measure, but necessary. Oh, well, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to use it. That's what you're thinking. No, no, no. I've worked way too hard to escape that crap. Never again. So, are the Blood Eagles just some other cult? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, they were just raiders who were destroyed by heavy chem addiction. But then, uh, you know, it wasn't just that. You know, some of them became incredibly violent and thoroughly enraged. I mean, before they were just a band of maniacs, and, and it was bad, yeah, but this, this is, this is new. This is, this is terrible. Once the Blood Eagles capture someone, what do they do with them? Well, they're sent to the cave for processing. Here, I got this holotape off one of the eagles a while back. Oh, it's sickening how little they value a human life. Even for a raider. With that, we begin the quest, Spilling Blood. Kill the Blood, the first leader of the Blood Eagles. Now, when we asked Beckett about what the Blood Eagles do to their captives, he gave us a holotape. Checking it out in our Pip-Boy, we can listen to the Saga of the Horn. Convert report status. Ten new recruits picked up by the Blood. It was actually twenty, boss, wasn't it? We only count the survivors, Ted. Oh, my official Blood Eagle name is now The Horn. <sighs> really? Fine. We only count the survivors, Horn. No, like The Horn, not Horn. You know, like The Claw, The Blood. You have to earn a The around here, Horn. But, but, okay, fine, what's your name? Nice to have I'll use that one in honor of you. You know, in the game. I 
am literally going to murder you. But, but, uh, okay, how about the bloodiest eagle of them all? Okay, bloodiest eagle, please wait in the hallway while I finish the report. Guard the door. Kill the intruders. I can do this. <sighs> Things will be okay. Right. I think we need to ditch the whole naming thing. It's getting out of hand. I will also need a new assistant. Ten survived the chems so with no issue. Nine okay. had reactions and were disposed of. One has been sent to see the eye. Oh, right. Better send someone to clean up the mess after their session is complete. Good grief, these blood eagles are insane. Giving themselves ridiculous names, experimenting on inductees. Only one in ten of their subjects had no reactions. They disposed of the rest. Doesn't seem like a very efficient way of increasing their ranks. Well, to kill the blood, we need to head to Bloody Franks, a brand new location built among the rooftops of Berkeley Springs. Heading to Berkeley Springs, we find an entrance to Bloody Franks on a road just above Amelia's Espresso. Aside from a jetpack, this is the only way in. We find a bunch of connected platforms and staircases that snake along the rooftops of Berkeley Springs, connecting almost all of the buildings in the small town. This has become a Blood Eagle Raider city, focused on the culinary arts. We'll learn more about the cast of characters in a minute, but first, we can look down the scope to kill Jesse the Hood. A rope bridge leads us to one of the primary kitchens of Bloody Franks. On one of the shelves, we find a note. Head hunters, head cheese. The other day while wandering through Appalachia, I was fondly reminded of a dish my dear Grammy used to make when I was a youth. I've been experimenting with what I could find around here to replicate this dish. Any red meat will do, but we're looking for as much facial tissue as we can find. Salt, spices, and broth to pull it all together. Take half your meat and grind it to a pulp. Then cube the rest, leaving any tasty gelatinous bits like a good piece of veer or nose. Mix that with your salt, spices, and water, and bake the mixture in a stag skull to impart flavor. For a real treat, I like to find one of those foundation folks. Lob her head off and scoop the insides out. Just like my sweet old Grammy used to make. Oh, great. So... Cannibals. Fun. We find a number of refrigerators here with meat inside, but they're caked in blood. And I don't think I really want to eat any meat that comes from this place. In the sink, we find a couple of heads, more meat in a bathtub, and all sorts of meat hanging from hooks. From here, the path continues to the south. It leads to an elevated trailer to the left. Here we find some bunk beds. We can loot the body of a blood eagle that we killed. And on a dresser next to the bunk beds is a note called Frankie's Fine Radstag Redemption. Oh God. Rick's Fine Radstag Redemption. Okay, who made this, Frankie or Rick? I got a bone to pick after the other night's supper. Whipped this up the other day. Ain't nobody gonna question my cooking no more. Get as much Radstag meat as you can get your hands on, cut into nice fat chunks. Just enough potatoes to thicken the gravy. They bring a richness you wouldn't believe. A splash of bourbon here and there while your cooking won't hurt. Some foul water ties this together, tenderizes the stag meat, and breaks it all down. I find the smokiness of an open flame works wonders with the delicious stag meat in the stew. Whatever bourbon you aren't going to drink is going to help our flavors mix and mingle till they cook up into something that'll keep your belly warm and make your toes tingle. Okay, that one, that one wasn't so bad. It was all pretty good except for the foul water bit. But stag meat, bourbon, potatoes, okay. At the end of the trailer, we find a terminal, Cook's Terminal. Locked with a skill level zero lock. After hacking it, we find two Cook's Logs. In the first Frank's Log, 
we find two of Frank's logs. In the first one, Frank won. That Jessie sure thinks she is smart, but she ain't smart like Frank is, no she ain't. This little hussy put something in my tasting bowl to make me sick. Then when dinner time rolls around, she's serving Jessie's low country Meyer Lurk boil. Well, okay then, Jessie. In the next one, Frank too. That new guy, boy, he sure can cook. We did tell him he'd be off dishwashing duties soon, so I feel kind of bad leading him on like this, but damn, is he a good source of material. Tried some radstag soup he stewed up the other night. Warm, hearty, and delicious. Folks around here are going to wonder how I keep doing it before long. Oh, so the name discrepancy on Frankie or Rick's radstag soup recipe wasn't a game glitch. It really was Rick's recipe, but Frankie stole it and tried to pass it off as his own. Backing out of Frankie's logs, we can move down to Jessie's, and she has three. In the first, Jesse won, decided to start this new guy who wants to work as cook here one day. Shows potential for sure. Well, what do you know, since we brought him on last week, Frank seems to have an endless supply of new recipes. Sure is strange behavior, serving the dishwasher's food. So Frankie wasn't getting away with it. Jesse was on to him. In the next one, Jesse too. Frank has been making a fuss over me serving what we made for dinner last night. Claims I poisoned him so I could brag about the food he made. That guy will go on about anything. One time we made something a little spicy and he was complaining about his tummy well into the next morning. Oh, well, but did she poison him or not? <laughs> she didn't really clarify here. And in the final one, number three. Well, Frank, tonight's your night, brother. Oh yeah, everyone is gonna know who served up dinner tonight. See, I have no idea what he was rambling about the other day, but tonight, Chef Frank is gonna serve up something mighty tasty and mighty toxic. This whole damn compound is gonna be puking their guts up. It's back to dishes for you, sir. Looks like Jessie is not shy to poison when necessary. Perhaps she really did poison Frank. Well, drama at the Blood Eagles cooking settlement. But man, these Blood Eagles have really established themselves well in a short amount of time. A sludge operation over at the Sludge Works, a prison over at Rollins, a means by which to feed the troops here at Frankie's, and a recruitment strategy with Buff Out. Continuing forward, we have to kill a Blood Eagle spotter. The spotter attacked us at one of these shacks. While looting, we peer through the window of a nearby shack to find Frank the Butcher. <laughs> Killing Frank caused a fracas in which we killed the blood, our quest objective. Looks like he was here to have a meal from Frank the Butcher. He was eating inside a little shack with a sign outside. Specials, one head cheese, two limb soup. We don't find any interesting loot on the inventory of the blood or Frankie, but we do hear another blood eagle nearby. Looks like we haven't cleared them all. On a table in the middle of this little restaurant, we find a number of vegetables and a note, Brahmin noodle soup. Chief Beef's Brahmin noodle soup. Old Jesse is back with another fine delicacy. Held up some foundation blokes the other day. We let them walk away after they handed over their Brahmin. Boy, those creatures sure are sweet. Salty too. Brahmin meat, now don't be shy. Hooves, ears, cheek, it's all delicious. Some fresh spring onion and leek. Whatever broth you find suitable will probably work. Salt, pepper, and the seasoning you got on hand. Ain't nothing to it. Brown the meat a bit and get your liquid in with the spices and salt. Add those veggies near the end so they still maintain some freshness. Oh, again, another one that doesn't sound so bad except for the whole hooves and ears thing, but that just may be my pre-apocalyptic squeamishness talking. Our path continues up a staircase to the south. It rounds a corner and brings us up to another floating building. And here we find the other raider. Looks like this is the raider barracks. We find beds here. On a nightstand next to some bunk beds, we find Larry's Low Country Meyer Lurk Boil. 
Back before the bombs dropped, me old mama used to boil up the local catch with potatoes, corn, and more than enough spices. This one's for you, mama. Mirelurk meat, best if it just stopped moving and throw some shell in for flavor. Corn cobs chopped in half, plenty of spices seasoned to your heart's desire. You can cook this in whatever water you can get your hands on. Get a good fire going and a pot of that water rolling on top. Now, if those Mirelurk legs twitch a bit, you got yourself something fresh. Don't go easy on the spices. We want a generous handful so it seasons the meat. Larry, Rich, Jesse, and Frank, how many competing chefs do we have here? Peering over the ledge, we find a guy we missed in a trailer we've already explored. <laughs> Looks like they're starting to respawn. Retracing our steps, we find a section we missed earlier from the restaurant. We find a path going down to the south. This leads to the rooftops of one of the shops of Berkeley Springs. If we turn left and go around a corner, we find the dishwashing section. And on a shelf, we find a note. Dishwasher Steve's note. These chumps started me washing dishes, telling me I'd be running the kitchen in no time. I guess they figured it's easier to use my recipes and keep me down here cleaning up after them. No matter, I still find time to cook, and I'm keeping the good stuff to myself from here on out. All I'm saying is, it sure would be a shame if anything happened to them. You know, I'm starting to get a pretty good idea of what my next secret ingredient might be. Ooh, Steve wants to poison them. Jesse wants to poison them. Good grief, looks like if we didn't come through here, they'd all be dead in no time anyway. We see that Stevie wasn't really good at washing the dishes. They're all piled up here. And that's it for Bloody Franks. Heading back to our camp, we can tell Beckett the good news. I just can't believe you did it. I just... I feel... lighter. I really... Ronnie came by while you were away. She said Edwin can't even consider helping us at all because he's in a state of, uh, despair. Look, uh, I know this sounds, uh, petty compared to what you've already done, but, well, his, uh, his dog is missing. A lost dog? Seriously? Look, I know, I know, it's ridiculous. But look, to finish off the Blood Eagles, we're gonna need Edwin's help, so... Let's play ball, okay? I gotta wait here for Sage, so do me this favor, please. Why don't we just kill Edwin so Ronnie takes his place? Uh, first of all, that's evil. You know, like evil. Edwin is a good guy. I mean, he's a little mushy in places, but he's fine. Secondly, that's Ronnie's uncle. And she actually loves him. Do you think she'd be happy with that? Come on, jeez. Uh, thirdly, Edwin has a ton of health issues. I'm surprised he's still around. We've been helping Ronnie this whole time. You know what I mean? We can pass a perception check of four to say, to some people, a dog is an important member of the family. Yeah, those people are called weirdos. <laughs> I don't care if Edwin wants to marry his dog, right? If he puts his gang on our side, we all win. Just give me the details and I'll grab the dog. Thanks, friend. Well, I know it's silly, but, uh, hey. It means some to Edwin, so what can we do? Aren't the Blood Eagles pissed at us now? They have no idea who you are. I'm, I'm sure they're taking out revenge on literally every single vault dweller they see right now. Others, too, maybe. I know it sounds like we made things worse, but we have to finish it. We have to cut off the other two heads. And then they're just idiots again. What else can we do to cripple the Blood Eagles? Well, I'm not sure yet. But I'm hoping some of my contacts will give me an idea while you're grabbing the... Uh, dog. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We can again flirt with Beckett by saying, I wanted you to know that I'm glad we've been getting along so well. I hope you feel the same way. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be honest. I've never been close. I mean... Not in the way you're talking about with anyone before her. It's kind of new to me. Wait, we are talking about what I think you're talking about, right? You know what? Maybe I'll just stop talking before I say something stupider. Huh? Deal? I'll find that dog, Beckett. 
See ya. I think its name is Noodles. I... I'm 60% sure of that. Anyway, uh, good luck. With that, we complete the quest Spilling Blood and begin the quest Pet Peeve. We've got to go rescue Noodles. Oh, poor Noodles. But sadly, I'm all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My shirts come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my members on YouTube and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't make these videos without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.